Hello and welcome to another Revit tutorial. In this video, we'll be continuing our discussion on Enscape. We're going to cover capturing screenshots, how to change camera settings, and just how to change some visual settings in Enscape to give you crisp, clear screenshots in just the style that you want. So let's get started. To access your Enscape settings, go ahead and click the tab in Revit that says Enscape and find the icon for settings over near the right. When you click it, it'll open this window. I have an Enscape view up, so I'm going to scooch Revit to the left over here, and we'll look in that view just to see how these different settings can affect your view in Enscape. So the first one that we see on the list is called white mode. I'll go ahead and check that box, and you see everything, just like the name says, has turned white over here in Enscape. And this can be pretty cool to use in schematic design. It doesn't show too much detail, it doesn't get your client carried away with the minutiae of the project before you want to. Um, to add a little more detail to white mode, you have this slider where you can adjust outlines. And as you drag that to the right, you can see that in the Enscape window, we're getting some outlines to that white geometry. The further you slide it, the thicker those lines get. That's pretty neat. One of the visual styles that's similar to that is polystyrol mode. This is made to mimic foam core as a modeling technique. And again, the uh, slider up here for outlines actually works in every visual mode, even when you don't have anything checked. So you can see even in a fully rendered view, if you want to give it a little extra pop, you can play with that outlines slider. So down here we have a couple more um, options. I'll go ahead and show you what those do. We'll switch over to walk mode by pressing the space bar here. So we have an option here for architectural two-point perspective. And when I click that, you'll notice that as I turn the view in Enscape, it's giving me a two-point perspective approach towards that view instead of... Let's go ahead and I'll, I'll demonstrate right here on this corridor. As I look up you see the ceiling gets really warped as my angle gets more acute to the ground plane. And then if I turn off two-point perspective, it gets less warped as you move that view. So keep in mind there are times when you can use that, times when you don't want to use it. Typically when you're doing a walkthrough, you don't want to have that checked just because it feels a little unnatural and disorienting. And then I'll get into fly mode. We'll go up here and I'll show you something really neat called Light View. So let's go ahead and check that box. And you can see over here everything has <laughs> changed color. And you have this chart to the right that shows you an estimation of how many lux is hitting the surface. This is a really neat tool. I'll go ahead and full screen that so you can see. And I'll close this uh, little settings window right here. Remember in Enscape, if you hold the right mouse button and move your mouse left and right, you can change the time of day. So I can actually see an estimation of the amount of lux that are hitting a space throughout the day. So I can tell that right around, let's say, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, there's a lot of light hitting this open space. So I'll go ahead and go back into Revit right here and switch to a design option. Don't want to save, don't want to synchronize, this is just a demo. And you can see my model has updated right here in Revit. I have a live updates feeding the active Revit view that I'm looking at. So let's go ahead and switch back to that window and see what that did. So you can see as soon as I switched the design options in Revit, our option is showing up over here. And we've got a couple little overhead planes to help mitigate some of that sunlight. We've got a second design option that fully cantilevers across. But we'll go ahead and push on. Let's look at some other um, settings that you can change in Enscape. I'll go back over here to the Settings tab, or the Enscape tab rather, Settings dialog box. I'll go ahead and show you both of these views at the same time. So let's say we don't want light view, we just want a regular rendered view, no outlines. We'll have, uh, have our rendering quality down here. You can see that it's set to ultra. I think by default it'll be set to medium. 
And what this rendering quality does, you hit this little question mark, it gives you a brief description, but essentially when you move through this space, every point that you update from your camera, your camera that's moving around, Enscape is gonna do a render pass for that view that you have locked. And when your quality is at medium, it's not gonna cycle through as many passes to render the scene. When your quality is set to ultra, you'll notice that when I get a little closer to this wall, it takes a little bit longer for some of those shadows and some of those textures to smooth out. But it also gives you a really crisp still image when you move to a view that you want and you're ready to capture it. So all of these settings, if you notice at the top of this window, there's this gray bar that says default. If you drop that down, you can see that I've set up a bunch of preset settings. I have one for white mode. I've got one preset for polystyrol mode. And you can, you can save these simply by adjusting the settings that you want here. Let's say I want this polystyrol, but I want it with really thin outline. Just enough to kind of see the edges there. You can save as new setting here. Click this drop down. In that new setting that you created, you can rename. So I use poly for polystyrol mode. Uh, rendering quality is medium, so I'll leave that medium. But I'll type in thin outline here. And when you hit that check mark, it saves that. So when you're switching between your views and you want to go back to that, what was it, poly, medium, thin outline, it'll save all of those settings that you've adjusted so that you can reuse them for another view. So let's go back to our starting view and I'll show you how to take screenshots and how to save them at different qualities. All right. So let's say we want to give our client a couple of screenshots of this uh, view in Enscape, and we want to show them uh, several different options. So we'll start by, if this is a view that you really want to keep, remember you can go back to Revit, and on the Enscape tab, you can create a view and call it whatever you want. I'll call this one Atrium View 1. Hit OK and that will save that camera position over here in your 3D views so that if you ever want to recall that exact view in Enscape you simply have to select that view, Atrium View 1, and then press Start to launch Enscape from that view. Since I already have it pulled up, let's go ahead and check it out. Um, looks okay. Maybe I want to adjust the sunlight a little bit. That's fine right there. So how do I create a screenshot from this view? Well, that's pretty easy. You go back to Revit and go to Settings. And here is where we're going to adjust our resolution for the image that we want to save from Enscape. I'll go to Capture on this little ribbon right here. And under Resolution, you can select whatever resolution you want. Um, you can even create a custom re resolution and type in what you want to capture there. So I'm just going to capture the window resolution so they can full screen it on their monitor and if they have the same size screen I guess we'll be seeing the exact same settings. Uh, other than that everything looks pretty good here. So to actually capture that you'll want to with your view setup in Enscape everything's looking good, it's the way you want it the angle is right. Go ahead and click this drop down. Screenshot to file. Screenshot. Yep, yeah, to file right here. And then you can select whichever uh, folder you want to create. If you want to create a new one, demo screenshots. Just select the folder that you want to save them into, and you can rename them. And you can save them as different file types right down here. I'll keep this one as PNG and I'll save it just like that. No extra work. This view right here is now saved. And I'll pull up that image and we'll take a peek at it. I'll double click my folder. There it is right there. Double click to open it. And you can see this image is pretty high quality. Um, they full screen it. It's going to look exactly how it looks on your screen. Let's uh, 
Let's go back to Revit. We'll switch up our design option. We'll go to Layout 2 and give that a second to update. There it goes. And then we'll wait for Enscape to update. And just like that, we're ready to take a next screenshot. Go back to Revit. Again, screenshot to file. And then you can save it. Let's call this one option two. Save. And you can keep going like this. Create a uh, collection of different screenshots for whichever areas in your project you want to. So the last thing I'm going to show you is how to just check through your materials and make sure that they're showing up correctly in Enscape. So let's say you're going through your model, you're just doing a final check. Okay, I've got some laminate here, the carpet I rendered looks good. Got some images linked in for that material there. And what is going on here? Uh oh, we have a desk that's not shown up with any materials. Let's see how we can fix this. Let's jump back into Revit. And let's find that desk. I know that desk is actually on an option set. So I'm going to pick that desk. And it doesn't matter which 3D view you work in, in Revit, you're still gonna be running the starting view in Enscape that you select before you hit start. So let's, uh, I'm gonna press HI on the keyboard to hide isolate, double click my mouse wheel, we'll zoom in on that desk. And I'm in shaded view, I can tell that there are no materials applied. This is a modeled in place, so I will edit in place. And let's see, I know this should be a solid surface, but when I look over here under material, it's set to default. So let's just hit this little radio button. I'll type in uh, solid on the material browser. And let's change this one to solid surface Arctic ice. So this is a material that I've set up in advance. It has an image map to it. This is actually a tile sample that we scanned in. We set it to a correct size and we're using that image. Set the glossiness, reflectivity, and bump. We actually just desaturated that same image to use it for the bump. Quick tip for materials. And under graphics we've checked use render appearance. So if I find that source image, let's open it here. I hit OK. I'll notice that material updates right here in Revit. If I hit Finish Model, and when we go back to Enscape, and you'll notice here, if I get really close, you can see that that material now has a little bit of a surface texture to it. Let's do the same thing with the laminate. That should be a lot more apparent. So I'll just go back to Revit. I'll select that desk and I'll fast forward a little bit to quicken this up. So you can see now in Enscape that that material has updated now that I've set it to a specific material in Revit. As long as I have that material created already, it's very straightforward and, and quick to go ahead and apply those materials to your objects and get them to show up in Revit, in uh, Enscape rather. Enscape's gonna read directly from Revit. So as long as you have the, the work and everything modeled, it's just going to read straight from there. It's really straightforward, really fast, no extra setup required. Uh, so I think that's pretty much it. Let me know if you have any questions, comment below. Um, and I hope I was able to show you something about uh, visualizing and setting up views, exporting some screenshots in uh, Enscape. Thanks for watching.